Welcome to the Earthworks Podcast, where our team will share the jargon of carbon from many of our turf friends from the past 30 years. Welcome to the Earthworks Podcast. I'm Joel Simmons. Today we're going to be talking to Kevin Mercer from Denison University. Kevin has been a friend for a very long time. We've known him through his career. We've been influenced by him. We've been inspired by him. He has taught us an awful lot. Today we're going to talk a little bit about his career, starting out in golf and spending a lot of years at the university level and as a grounds manager. Uh, his philosophy of basic agronomy and carbon-based fertility and biological soil management. And we're going to finish up by talking about a little project that he uh, he's been working on. Hopefully you stay tuned and can listen to our conversation. Thank you very much. Here's Kevin. Hello, everybody. This is Joel Simmons for the Earthworks podcast. Today we have a, uh, a friend of ours who we've been working with for a number of years, Mr. Kevin Mercer, who is uh, the grounds manager. I should actually let you introduce yourself because I'm not sure exactly what your title is, but Kevin has been at Denison College in Ohio, just north of Columbus, Ohio, for the last number of years. Uh, we've had the pleasure of, of knowing Kevin and actually working with Kevin and seeing his brilliance. Uh, all of us here at, at, uh, at Earthworks call Kevin a, uh, a renaissance man because he, he really is. And, and he really kind of understands the whole process of, of how uh, a college university setting uh, works. But uh, Kevin, thank you so much for joining us today. Like I said, you and I go way back. I don't even know when I met you, to be honest with you. Do you? No. Uh, I, wow. It's uh, no. Um, gosh. <laughs> It's See? been a while. That's what it's most people say when they talk to me, but that's good. That's good. That that's good. And I, I respect the friendship and of course, you know, all your all your uh, cohorts that work at Earthworks, great bunch of people, professional and um um always there. Uh just a phone call away if I need anything. You know, great, great bunch of people. Well, so you. yeah, um I've been at Denison now for about three it's over over three years. Um Is it really? Wow. Yeah. Um you know, it's uh um it, it 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 it's going by quick, Joel. It's going by quick, yes, and uh, it always does at this age. It does. It does. I mean, <laughs> I'm not even close yet. You'll get there, but it's going to go faster and yeah. faster. So hold yeah. on tight, my friend. Yeah. Tell yeah. me, give me your background. So the where I know you started, I know you did some internship at uh, Chevy Chase under our friend Dean, uh, and you spent a lot of time in St. Mary's. But walk me through. Give me the the history of. Kevin Mercer and and what your background is. Where did you go to school? Let's 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 find out who you are first and foremost, and then I'm going to dive into some uh, more interesting things. Oh, I, I'd be happy to. So for me, it really started, um, you know, back when I was about seven. Um, let's uh, not go back that far. <laughs> it's a it's a short story. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, my grandfather, you know, has got me into farming and, and taught me, you know. Uh, looking for potato bugs and earwigs on the corn and so forth. I was doing IPM at seven before it was even cool, you know, Joel. So from there, you know, wasn't so much money in farming. So um, we went, I was kind of looking around and I remember uh, in, in, uh, in the early nineties or late eighties, um, I found this job in, in a paper for internet, you know, you used to look in a paper for part-time jobs or full-time jobs and, Gettysburg Country Club that was kind of founded by President Eisenhower had yeah. this little nine hole uh, track uh, there in Gettysburg, uh, Gettysburg Country Club, in fact, uh, real old school, you know, watering at night, you know, with the quick couplers and so forth. And, and so I used to come in and water at night and then, you know, work during the day and um, knew from that day on, you know, that's what, that's what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And then from there, I went to, uh, you know, Black Rock Golf Course and eventually under Dean Graves, as you mentioned, where I learned, you know, um, one of the first mentor. things Dean taught me was, you know, and, and we had countless, countless uh, dinners together, uh, celebrations and so forth. And Dean's like, you know, the first thing we should learn is, you know, etiquette. And I'm like, you know, I want to learn all about this golf course stuff nice. and, and, and all this agronomy. And, you know, and he's like, he goes, you're going to be dealing with people with, with, you know, with money and, and professionalism and you have to, you know, play the part, you know? So, you know, one of the first things to do is took a course, some of the best advice I ever got 
And then I moved from, you know, I worked for about a year or so at Bethesda Country Club under Dean. And then I went under uh, Luc Maison Pierre, where I really got my yep. training. Yep. I learned that, you know, you're high in country clubs, you can throw money at problems and it just goes away. Right. But, you know, looks like we don't do that here because we don't spray unless we have to. And you got to tell me why we have to spray. So, you know, it's like, you know, that was really getting into IPM then. It wasn't like even a fad then, <laughs> you know, it's a money thing. It's always about a cost, uh, uh, you know, cost analysis and cost savings for budgets and so forth. So Luke really taught me a lot. It was really a, a cool gig when I got my first assistance job there, super assistant superintendent, because Andrews has three golf courses. So I had my own course. It's like I was my own, like I work in superintendent and process. Super, super, right. Yeah. So like my own course, my own, my own staff. And, you know, and of course, you know, Luke had three assistants that maintained each golf course and learn about the, you know, localized dry spots and, you know, don't overwater in the greens. You don't turn the greens on to schedule, you know, it, just so much. I, I can't even get into it because it'd be a the four art hour. Of wandering. We've talked yeah, it'd be a four hour talk. So Probably. from there, I, um, you know, I, I left there and I, and I got my first grounds manager job at St. Mary's College. And at first I was kind of like, you know, bummed out because I didn't get me on track. And then a good friend of ours, Mike Gilmore, kind of set me straight on that, on that path. Yeah. So, um, you know, uh, St. Mary's College was, was for me like uh, a, a pivoted moment, Joel, um, in my career. Because um, I come all, I went there like one day one with a golf course one on one maintenance program and you know <laughs> been out there spraying and and so forth and you know the the students were were ready to you know hang me or <laughs> ready to ready to you know you know so the, the next day I was a bit different yeah so the next day I you know I would have done what any other golf course superintendent would have done and I just put my assistant on the sprayer to guy who took over uh, Steve he's down there now he was a great guy I'm under the bus why not yeah well, that's what you do with assistants you know now I'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> so but this this dude has taught me a lot so they they really got me thinking about the you know because St. Mary's College sits right along the river so you know those those young students um they, they got me thinking in a different way than what I normally would think um I remember I don't want to mention what state it was but I was at a uh, one of these turf grass association seminars, Joel, and, you know, someone made the comment that was from a high-end uh, club, country club, said, you know, if we're not spraying, it's raining, you know, and I was kind of <laughs> thinking, like, like, that's not a good program, you know. That's, and, yeah, that's and, not IPM, is it? <laughs> no, no, no. So, you know, it, it, it kind of stuck with me, and, and as I kind of stayed in the liberal arts arena, when I went from, uh, St. Mary's College to Vassar up in New York, you know, I really had a, a, a good keen sense of, of, of the environment and really, you know, just learning from these, from different students in different states that I've worked at and different solutions and different problems and, and some, all these problems can't be fixed, but it started making me feel like I should be more responsible for the industry and, and try to, to sh showcase that, hey, the, the green industry, the turf grass industry, or the grounds management industry, you know, however you want to say it, you know, we can show good stewardship and we can, we can be good stewards. You know, we, we don't want the government telling us what to do. We have to listen to the government, acknowledge the problem and, and try to be good stewards about it. You know, um, yeah. we might not agree on everything, but at least we have to listen and, and try. So that's kind of was my mindset, you know, mindset, Joe. And, um, from there, I worked at a real high-end boarding school in New Jersey, and um, from you know, which was K through 12. I'm sorry, it was like a nine through 12, like a high school, and um, you even have stricter uh, pesticide regulations uh, uh, at that school. And then, you know, I, uh, my wife um, Sally, she got a vice president's job in Pittsburgh, and uh, the only uh, job was well, actually two jobs, believe it or not, it was Lafayette and Denison that interviewed me. Both of them wanted me. And I know Lafayette's right there in your backyard. Yeah, we were hoping you'd come here, actually. It'd be right yeah. down. Yeah. But Denison was like, you know, just just a couple hours away from Sally. And I got to tell you, when, when I hit the Midwest, um, you know, it just felt right, Joe. For the first time right. in, in my career, it just felt right. And it's a, it's a great place. And, um, uh, you know, it, 
I learned a lot. And if I were, if I were you, I would stay as close to Sally as you possibly can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Having the pleasure yeah. of knowing your wife, I would definitely want to stay as close. Hey, Kevin, yeah. tell me, talk to me about that that jump, though. I mean, you you kind of broached it a little bit here, but you went from the golf course industry to a private school. Um, Dean Graves gave you a little bit of precursor to etiquette mm-hmm. and the mm-hmm. politics. I can't imagine that it wasn't radically different going from that golf. I mean, obviously the agronomy and, and as you talked about the spring and all that stuff, but what about the politics and the, and the, and the people and the people you were responsible to, what was the politics like? Uh, and, and, and what was the expectation uh, level? Uh, what was the difference in expectations between uh, what you were getting used to in the golf course world to what you're now in with the, uh, with the private school world? Yeah, uh, and it was it, it, it was a big difference, um, and both of them have their pros and cons. So, like, you know, it's always about the turf. It's just about the grass. Um, what was funny, you know, is um, you know, uh, I always talk about this when I talk to the guys on the crew. Uh, I always say like, you know, turf grass guys. If there's a tree, you know, they say we'll cut the tree down. You know, and then the horticultural <laughs> guys or the arborist guys, they say, well, if there's, you know, get rid of the grass around the trees and you, you'll be all right. You know, then it won't hurt the roots that way. So it's kind of like, a, you know, but it, it was a big there's difference. truth in both. <laughs> yes. It, it, yeah. But it, it was, it was a, uh, it was a, it was a bit of a difference. Um, and I got to tell you, it, it was looking back, it's probably the only smartest decision I ever made because remember, Joel, I started at St. Mary's College of Maryland, uh, when uh, night 2004 and it, it was the golf was at its peak. I mean, yeah. golf was like yeah, banging. Really. And then really. like, you know, shortly after that, like it just started going, going to this whirlwind, you know, and, and started going golf downwards. Did. Golf, yeah, golf did. Right. And, you know, I, I've learned a lot when I went to the liberal arts and kind of most of my career has been the liberal arts arena, Joel. I, I've learned a lot about, you know, things I was doing wrong, you know, things with the environment and being sustainable and, and, and you know, and um, a good friend of mine, Dave, uh, Dr. Menner, David Menner, you know him as well. Yeah. You know, he said it best. He says, we're only here for a short time. You know, it's not our property. We're just borrowing it. You know, that's all yep. that we really are. So, you know, leave it in good shape, you know, when, when we're done. So that's kind of what the liberal arts taught me um, with the expectations I got to tell you, it's, it was always up really what I felt like to me, to what the expectations should be. But when I came to Denison, and I can get into this with you a little later, everything kind of like just made perfect sense. It was like the, the world got more clear. Um, and, and I think that starts with your president of the, of the college and what he envisions. And um, that's why I'm lucky here, because our president really envisions the, the grounds here at, uh, at Denison and has an, an, a major role uh, for our admissions tour and so forth. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, let me, like, let's stay with St. Mary's, because I don't really even know this. I mean, as long as I've known you, I don't know uh, the whole St. Mary's experience. When you got to St. Mary's, are you now driving the environmental train or are you getting that dictated to you by the school? Uh, I would think that, you know, the environmental piece is radically different from a golf course. Yeah. Uh, you know, like you're saying, a lot of guys are, you know, spray and go guys. Whereas, you know, with the universities or the schools, they're, you know, you know, much more uh, different. Yeah. Problems. Like some Who's driving like, that. So like that, that was really a lot of, a lot of, uh, well, with state regulations and, and, and oh, okay. how we work with state regulations, yeah. stormwater management. Um, I didn't even hear about stormwater management when I was at Fluke Mesa up here at Andrews Airport. Because right, they don't you know, care on the You know, it's just like, you know, and I'm not saying the federal government because they got a pretty hard, you know, they got a really strict uh, yeah. EPA and uh, uh, OSHA requirements that you have to follow on this military basis. But I'm sure it's heard about now, but wasn't much talked about then. But when I went to St. Mary's College, well, it was sits right there off the water, Joel, and um, you know it's right there off the St. Mary's River. Uh, it's a beautiful campus that has a beautiful watershed view, and you know when I when I tell you that day when I went out in the sprayer and all the students were just like appalled, like you know <laughs> at me, you know, I was just thinking these hippies, you know, what are they doing, you know, and they kind of educated me. So really, it was it was, if this makes sense, it was the the liberal arts arena that driven me. I was still. To this day, I'm still focused on the grounds has a function. You know, you have to treat, you maintain your lawns, your shrubs, your trees, whatever, 
as if it was a function like a T fairway or putting green would be. So that was something that I kind of like installed um, into everywhere I've been. And, and, and um, how is, uh, how is the cruise at, at all these, I mean, you've been, you've been geographically, you know, uh, Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Ohio, you've been dancing around uh, in your career. How's the, how's the, uh, how do these, geographically, how do the crews accept, you have a very strong philosophy on what you're doing, but how do the crews accept that? Because I know I've been with you and, and, you know, and, and helped you walk through some of this with some of your guys at Denison, but uh, has it been different in each spot, each state? I mean, is, yeah. have the crews uh, oh, rebelled? Night, <laughs> night and day, like, yeah, Marilyn, you know, you, you always have, a, you know, it's, you always have some good people on on the cruise on the east coast i'm not i'm not putting any of, of the east coast crews down but but when i came here to the midwest it was like you know it was like everyone on the crew joe not only had great work ethics all right yeah but you know wanted to learn wanted to know um to give you an example of that um the professional grounds management association has this um, certified grounds technician and it's more of like an IPM course okay but those guys studied hard for a year every one of them and got certified in this so now it's like I got all these scouts out there you know when they're mowing or they're trimming or they're every one of your crew is certified and one of my crew is certified oh, yeah was that a hard sell or were they no, really they, no they wanted to do it we took time rainy days we might took three hours with training with them um, you know just giving them tests every week get them prepped for this test really yeah. And then, um, then two of them actually went on from there. I'm sorry, three of them went on from there and got pets, you know, got their certification, got their pesticide certification. So, I mean, it's, 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 it's like these steps are taken. Two of them left me and went on to, you know, to do their grounds managers already. So that's sort of rewarding too. But, you know, I, if I knew the Midwest was, was this great and people are so receptive in the, in the work ethics, I, I wouldn't have been here a long time ago. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I would have. Uh, and then the carbon fertility, you know, when you came out a couple of times and you brought, um, I think Kevin Hicks and Jack um, the Higgins. Whole team, the whole team came yeah, out. Yeah, the whole team. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Point, that's right. Yeah. I forgot that. Yeah, I'm going to upset um, a couple guys. Kirk there. and Chad were Kirk all there. Chad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, damn, damn. Sorry. Kirk, yeah, no, can't Chad. forget them. No, absolutely not. No, no. And I mean, they actually, loved the experience. I mean, it was a wonderful experience. I mean, uh, just to kind of fill in what, what Kevin's talking about, uh, our, the whole agronomy team from Earthworks came out to visit uh, Kevin. We actually came out the night before, had a uh, wonderful steak meal and a nice couple of bottles mm -hmm. of wine. Uh, we oh, went yeah. up and visited you. And I think you joined us for a while up at Logan Labs. Yeah, it was a really uh, nice tour. I'm with Bill McKibben. But yeah. our guys still talk to this day about that time that we spent with you because you're you know in what we've been doing for all these 30 years you know and talking biological soil management you've really been a leader in, and and actually you've been teaching us as much when they went to your facility and saw the excitement that your guys had for what you brought to them and and I can the reason I was asking you this question is that I can see and I, I know you well and I, I say this as a friend you come in full guns of blaring and, and you know and it's this yeah. is you know and it doesn't stop I mean it's like yeah. okay and the, and I can see where people would stand back like whoa what the heck is this all about yeah but yeah the guys at Denison and again, oh. I've, I've kind of followed you around Vassar in New Jersey. Uh, I saw some rebellion in some of those spots, but in yeah. this place, man, their eyes were like wide open and they were, you know, and, and they were like, they were sponges for information. And we, you know, my guys still, like I said, talk about it to this day. It's like, yeah, I, I got to tell you, Joel, like, you know, some of the stuff we we're doing, they never seen before. So when I first came here, there was a lot of bare grounds, empty beds, um, just just a lot of uh, just just a canvas that needed to be painted. That's how I only <laughs> way I could explain it. But the crew, when they start seeing, like I said, this is what we put down the mycorrhizans for. This is how it works when we airify. This is the five four five. I would show them the soil test that you first did for me when you know at Logan Labs when when it came back. I said, you know. This is like an equalizer is how I explain it to them. Yeah. You know? So what we got to do is we got to get these soils in tune, you know, I said, cause right now it's all over the place, you know? So I said, they weren't good. Were they when we, no, first no, no. And, and I got really bad. 
some of the just difficult soils here in the Midwest, you know, yeah. low on low on sulfur and high on calcium and magnesium, just some of the worst soils you could ever imagine. So I'm saying we use these products so we can, you know, adjust the equalizer to, to get it perfect, to get it level, you know, so we can make things grow. So um, they're like, okay, we haven't seen this. Some of my guys been on this crew for 25, yeah. 23 years. They're like, well, we never seen this, but they did in one year. And, and then they start really buying into it, you know? So one of the guys actually says, you know, he calls me, I can't believe I'm saying this on this podcast, but he calls <laughs> me pudding because he says that the proof's in the pudding. So he calls me pudding all the time. <laughs> oh, I you like know? that. I might have to use that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the, the, you know, the, the, the stuff works and, you know, and since then, you know, our grounds now is, you know, with this, I got a crew of six and when, you know, we've gotten accreditation to the Professional Grounds Management That's Society, phenomenal. a two-star, which they can use when we get accredited from, you know, for, um, for higher education, because part of that can go into the facilities. And then two, I mean, we won the grand award and also from the, again, the Professional Management uh, Grounds Society and also the first ever environmental award, which we're very proud of here. So, yeah, um, yeah it, it was, uh, this, this is, I always say like, um, if, if uh, on my Facebook page for the grant, we have a grounds uh, page on the, on Facebook uh, called Grounds and Landscape at Dennis University. Um, you, you'll see on there, you know, only got six guys, and boy, they do some of the best work you ever want to see. And I'm you so proud of you them. You wouldn't believe that. Let me tell this story. I, I remember I was out, uh, I was out at Dennis and pretty early on in your career. And uh, I remember walking around, um, so, and it's a beautiful campus, uh, yeah, and, and you, you've had some pretty impressive people come through Denison over the many years that yeah, uh, yeah. that school has been in place. Uh, but I remember walking specifically uh, around what I, and, and you're going to correct me because I'm going to get this wrong, but uh, I think it was around the president's uh, off uh, building uh, yeah. and, and it was basically dirt. I mean, it was, it was nothing yeah. but dirt. And then That's I right. remember, um, and you know, I got out there early on and then maybe six months or less than a year later, you sent me a picture of that same place uh, that was completely grassed over. I think you'd put in tall type fescues, and again, That's right. wrong. Yeah. and it was a carpet. And and, yeah. and I remember coming back uh, a year or so later, and we were walking that same area, and happened to run into the president, who basically mm -hmm. came out and and I think he bowed at you and, and got on his knees and bowed down to you. No, no, he didn't. I don't think I don't know that must have <laughs> somewhere right, maybe, else. Maybe I'm exaggerating, but maybe that was in my head. But I it was it was overly impressive. I mean. Like I said, Kevin Mercer goes full guns at everything he does. And you got out there and, you know, it's your personality, it's your body type, but you went full guns at this thing. But that was one of the more impressive things that I saw uh, among many impressive things. And of course, now you're also managing the fields and all that other stuff. How long did it take you to get that quad area uh, up and running? So when, when I came here, the A quad, what you're referring to, was uh, was being renovated. It was a $1.5 million renovation. Um, and they said, Kevin, we want to use this events lawn, so we want it to look good all times, you know. And I said, okay, so, you know, we have to go with the USGA sand mix with it. And they said, great, let's do it. <laughs> then, I, then, then I gave them the bill. <laughs> 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 but but it, it has paid worthly, you know. Uh, I gotta be with you. I have to be. I think probably the only person that has a uh, fescue in a 12-inch USGA sand uh, spec. But it 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 holds up, Joel, and yeah, um, it takes a little more of your fertilizer to keep the organics in the, into the sand right. and so forth. But it it does a wonderful, wonderful job. And um, you know, it's all a part of the emissions tour. Um, it, do you remember when you were just talking about you know the expectations? Yeah. So. If you, don't, if you don't mind, I'd like to get into this for a little bit because it's important. It's very important. Absolutely. This is part of what we wanted to talk about today. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so when I first came here it, on my interview, and this is why I choose to go really over Lafayette. Sorry, Lafayette. Yeah. Um, their expectations were just perfectly, perfectly clear. And this comes from the president. The president wants this school to be in a different class you know, and hopefully one day in a, in a, in an Ivy league status. So to do that, you know, we have to benchmark ourselves against the Lafayette's of the world and, and other, uh, um, you know, other, uh, top notch guy, liberal arts. Boys. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So to do that, you know, the mission is if, if we, you know, we got the education tracks, we got great education tracks. Um, 
wonderful alums, um, you know, Jennifer Gardner, Stephen Corral, or Steve Corral. Uh, nice, um, just a wonderful, wonderful faculty. And it sits in like a Norman Rockwell town where, you know, some yes, of these other, uh, some of these other like Ivy League schools, you know, and, and it's just where there are, you know, you're worried about getting mugged when you get out of your car, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, this school is, sits in a perfect location. I love everything about it. And I love the mission. So, you know, um, Dr. Weinberg, you know, clearly said, you know, in, in his cases, yeah, the president, I'm sorry, uh, President Weinberg, you know, said that, you know, if we want to sell this as a very high-end liberal arts education uh, institute, we have to make sure it looks that way, you know. Yeah. So when parents are bringing their students here, you know, if we want to brag on our education, we want to brag on Dennis University, you know, make it look that way, make it look where there's something where, you know, and, um, and they do, and they back me up 100%. Uh, I, I have never worked at an institution that believes that the grounds is yeah. driven, you know, you know, from the emissions source, and that's where it all starts. So I can assume that, you know, and I know you've spoken at uh, PGMS meetings and other uh, meet, national meetings on this subject, but this is one of the things that you taught me that I find fascinating. And, and, and we do work with a lot of schools, uh, but how much uh, recruiting, how much they use your work that grounds the, the quality of the grounds in the recruiting process. I think that's brilliant. And, and I can yeah. say that as a parent of a college age student, I remember when we first started doing our tours. Now, of course, I'm biased and I know you, but I remember going around. I mean, we probably went around to the normal 10, 20 schools and, yeah. and, you know, being a horticulturist and an agronomist, it makes my perspective different, but knowing you really changed them. I'm, I'm walking around these properties. And I'm like, no, we're not going here. This place is a dirt track. You know, it's a dog track. I mean, it's dirt, yeah. you know, mud and, and it's, there's no flowers. The trees look like they about to be dead and fall over. Yeah. And then you go to another uh, school and the grounds were in, in, impeccable and you say, Oh yeah, no, I could see my son or my daughter going to this school. And, yeah. and, and, and I think you have been instrumental in these small colleges. And I remember you telling me that small colleges are struggling. I mean, they're, they're having a hard time compete. And, and this is one of the ways that they're out. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Joel, like excellent points. Um, so like during that interview process, you know, they said there's this thing called a discount rate. And really what that means is if, if parents right. bring their students to the college, you know, they can say, well, you know, you, you want 60000 a year, but we're going to give you forty five. It's like a used car type of, of, of buying. I know the vice president, if he hears this, is going to kill me for saying that. But, <laughs> but he's, he, he's, he's we'll a great guy. <laughs> yeah, Dave English is a or super not. great guy. Anyway, um, so... Davis, like, you know, David English is the vice president for uh, finance here at Denison. And he says, Kevin, you know, we're, you know, typically we're at 20%. We want to get down to 10%. And we were actually down to 8% last year. So that shows us that, see, we're going to that rank and we're going up to a, to a higher league, Joel, you yeah. see. And you have to have the educational tracks first, you know. But then, you know, but then it doesn't help when Jennifer Gardner comes and wants to meet the grounds crew and so forth and, and get your picture taken with them. And it's just, you know, and other hard workers just like, wow, you know, this is really worth it. And, of course, you know, uh, I forgot to mention, we're, we're the first school, well, the first collegiate school to put in a Bermuda field, which is best field in the league. You know, and I can say that confidently, you know. Which we, you know is impossible to have in middle of Ohio, right? Yes. You know yes. that, I hope, right? You know? Yes. Yes. <laughs> but, but it's a beautiful field, isn't it? Yeah. And, and you know, and, 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 and uh, it, it feels good, you know, like uh, the crew and, and I, we stand around when visiting teams are coming, you know, we hear comments like, well, our scoreboard is at least better, you know, <laughs> 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 you know, so that makes the crew feel good. It makes myself feel good too. But, you know, yeah. the other thing that I remember, Viv, and I tell people this a lot of your school is, you know, I mean, you do a phenomenal job on the landscaping, the flowers. But the one thing that I am always impressed when I'm on your campus is your hanging baskets. I mean, you've got these things. I mean, it's envy. I am, you know, as a home gardener, anybody would be envious of those. They're like 10 feet tall, 10 feet long. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I got to give it a really, I got to give, I got to give you kind of credit. Yeah. Well, let's not do that. So I, I have to, cause you know, it's, it's, I'm telling you, it's a, it's a C3, it's C3, you know, uh, no, thank you. we put, we put uh, uh two gallons of C3 and a hundred gallons of water, which takes about 
about every bit of 100 gallons of water. We have roughly around 24 baskets, and uh, we water them every day, um, unless it's raining, of course. But yeah. um, you know, and I don't know if it's the sugars or whatever, but just I mean, it, you think the flowers need a haircut because they just come down so it's, far from. They're the unbelievable. Basket. I mean, they when you drive that campus, it's the first thing you notice. You know, and, and I can imagine as a prospective student, parent of a student, that's going to be one of the first things you notice. But, you know, you know, I, I mean, I, again, I've driven around the property with you a few times. And 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 the thing that really uh, gets me excited is how incredibly excited you are of all the work that you're, you and your team have done and, 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 and the changes that have been made. I mean... I can imagine it wasn't great shape when you got there, but you know, they're just very open receptive. Um, and when you. they see the proof and, and they see like, you know, the, the, what your products can do a hair Joel. I mean, it, you, you could just, you know, anyone watching this, just call my crew up. They'll tell you there. It's just, you know, it makes me look like a rock star. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's just open a bag and apply it. And, and thank God I, I have you for that. <laughs> where did this where you had this philosophy long before you and I started uh, talking, but where did this ag agronomic philosophy come from? Was it from the change of going from golf to schools and getting into that? But you've got a yeah. very strong biological soil management approach and you understand the soil piece of it. We're going to talk a little bit about your, your book that you've written all about carbon. Uh, yeah. But, you know, you've, you've been doing this for a long time. So where did this carbon based philosophy uh, come from with you? Well, you know, and I got to tell you, it's been through you too, Joel, through, this, you know, through your soil academies, but, you know, and research and just, just bending in the business for 20 years, you know, we do put synthetic fertilizers down, but we put them down right. as a carrier for our pre-emergence or, you know, twice a year for the fall and the spring. And then the other synthetic fertilizer I'll use is 0050, you know, it's a potash just to build up the carbs in the plant, you know, before yeah. it gets cold or hot. Right. Like so but, even to keep, you know, keep things in balance. Yeah. But when it comes to, you know, biological, you know, it, it's, it's true. And um, I just, I just, I, I, I used to argue when I was younger, you know, and now I just like, you know, just, just, you know, look at our wall. <laughs> look at the awards, <laughs> I guess, you know, I don't, I'm not I'm trying to be, you know, condescending, but it works. Biological works. It feed in the soil works. And like I said, all it does with that equalizer, you get the soil report, you build everything up according, you know, or try to, you know, set your goals, set your benchmarks of what you want to do each year. And it works. Um, you know, just, you know, we use uh, granular products once a, you know, once a month. Um, between the five four five uh, the 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 eight two two and the um, the ten two uh, five in uh, did I say that right the analysis right you got and, it all that's all right. that's right yeah and then we also do it like a foiler like you know when it gets hot in July we back off the granulars yeah. and we'll uh, and we'll uh, you know do four weeks of of a foil of a foilage spray um, yeah, on the grass you know foiler and yeah. uh, and we do that twice a month uh during the when we put the granular applications down and i gotta tell you um you know it it it, it sets it off and when, when people come here on the campus you know um or when the town is coming up to the president, you know, saying like wow this campus looks good or or, or you get a lot of accolades from the parents vision right. you know Th that that separates us from from other colleges and that's no doubt what we want. no doubt you know you were also one of the guys that taught us as a team here uh of the value of the upfront investment and you're probably the biggest upfront investor i mean you come in like i said full guns of bearing but you came in here and, and a couple of other places you've been at and you basically just front loaded everything yeah cool. I mean, yep. almost to a point of getting into trouble financially. But, you know, once you got that ball rolling biologically in the soil, you were able to bring all that budget back in the, into line. But now you had a foundation. I mean, has that, how did that come about? How did you discover so, that investment? So I, I've learned like, you know, look, it's, it's good for the earth. It's good for the environment. When I was at, uh, you know, when I was at St. Mary's College of Maryland, you know, I don't care what college you go to, your your uh, vice president of finance does not care. So I just learned to kind of sit, you know, you know, try to slip the invoice under his door of his office. <laughs> now <it's> Apologize <laughs> later. <laughs> now you got to come up with an ROI and you got to say, hey, look, we're going to put down this amount of money this year. But in two years, as the carbon builds up in the soil, we're going to be reducing it down to this kind of, you know, to this money and to this money. And as long as, um, you know, 
it, it's working because you know the, for the last three years we had record breaking emissions. You know, so it's it's, yeah. it's working. Even during this COVID crisis, we had a record record. We set another record for the emissions here. We're sending more students away than we're actually accepting. Good for so, you. That's phenomenal. You know, and for us. So and it's with the faculty. It's just not all like sometimes I do think like this whole campus revolves around the grounds, but there's actually an it education does. here. You know? <laughs> nah, forget that stuff. The school the grounds are much more important. Hey, you mentioned this, but how has COVID affected you? I mean, I know how it's affected me and everybody can see it by the fact that I haven't had a haircut in four months, but Yeah, well, yeah, I know. I, I understand. Hair, but how how is that affecting you and and how do you think it's going to affect your industry uh, long term? Well, that's a that's a good, loaded and a good question yeah, at the same I know. time. <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, I'm lucky because we're working at an institution that's healthy, strong. We are we are very healthy, good. strong right now. Um, we got to wait to see if our West Coast students or students overseas are going to come back. And when yeah. I say come back, they're going to come if they're not going to come back out of fear, or if they're going to come back. Um, then we got to take that percentage and figure out, okay, how we got to adjust our budgets from that, Joel. Um, so that's not going to happen until early August, because we're bringing them back in on early August, and we're going to, you know, let them go in early November, so they don't go and come back. So they're contained. Yeah, this, this, yeah. the the faculty and staff and and some of the higher administrators are all working together to develop a plan for the COVID-19 of uh, maybe some outdoor classrooms, uh, social distance, oh, interesting. staging yeah. everything and from cafeterias, you know, to dorms, uh, making sure that everyone has a, at least six feet apart. In case someone does get COVID-19, we have a, a, a hotel or a, like a hotel here on the campus uh, that we can send them to that, you know, for recovery for two weeks for isolation and so forth so i gotta tell you um this this administrative uh team here at denison is is beyond impressive it's it, it, it amazes me like every time they they talk you know with their missions or mission statements or, or or whatever they're doing they're so far ahead of everyone else and and i'm proud to be a part of it i really am i'm just proud to be a part of this team and you're obviously a big part of it uh, as well, but that's that's got to be a challenge. I mean, I, I, I we talk to schools all over the country, and it's this whole situation, and we could probably spend a day talking about it. But uh, hopefully, it starts to uh, pull yeah. out. Yeah, it's, it's nervous, Joel. Uh, yeah. Speaking about the industry is, is how is if you know if schools are struggling before this COVID nineteen happened, it's it, it's it's kind I can of imagine. it's it's worrisome if they're going to pull through this. Um, yeah. Our, our VP of finance said it best, Dave English, if everyone's kind of together going up the hill before the COVID-19 happened, we should be going down the hill together. But if yeah. anyone's behind us, you know, they're going to be in trouble. Yeah. Well, yeah. let's keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. You know, let me, let me switch gears a little bit. One of the things that I've always been impressed by you and you're a, uh, you're a master of is you're a master record keeper. Uh, I mean, you have shown me spreadsheets yeah. that have blown my mind and yeah. I'm like, what the heck? I mean, so you break out every job, you break out the, you know, I mean, you basically can go to financial people on that campus and say, if you want us to do this, it'll cost you X, X, and X. Yes, yes. And that that's keeping myself organized. You know, I, I have terrible ADHD. So, you know, I really try to keep myself disciplined and organized with and, and spreadsheets, probably the best way I do it, not just for finances or for ROIs, but even, you know, when you remember coming to my shop, we got pr plans don't, on yes. the shop, you know, where yeah. I don't, I don't hide them. I, I share everything and, and we put them on the wall. So when I tell the crew, go up go put fertilizer down i don't have to tell them what setting they just go look at the chart boom we hit it you know um great and, coaching uh, a phenomenal yeah. coaching experience and you've you've taught some of this stuff at some of the association meetings stma or pgms yeah uh, we, yeah these. we gave uh actually uh uh from yeah last year i think we did a Bermuda, did a bermuda field talk you know yeah. build, uh, growing bermuda in the north um from management, team building, environmental talks. Um, I mean, I remember at first, I mean, I, I was, I think I was, I was kind of following behind you at the trade shows sometimes just doing uh -huh. the environmental talks and so forth back in, in the earlier 2000s. But anyway, it's, it's, it's been fun. And I tell you, there's a lot of people I respect in this business and a lot of people give me a lot of opportunity and, and I, I really appreciate that. 
Well, you've put together, I mean, you, you, you are, you know, a master of, of managing all these no, things. And like you, one thing that you did mention that I think is imperative in, in the job that you do is being able to show the return on investment, the ROI. Yeah. Yeah. And that's been really your focus as long as I've known you. Yeah. You, you have to, you know, like, um, rather it's, you know, putting your products and saying, Hey, look, build up the carbon. Here's how much money you're going to save in the next 10 years. And, you know, I, I could be off, you know, a little bit, but you know, I'm, I'm pretty much spot on right to selling irrigation. It's like, you know, we're going yeah. to blanket everything and slit seed every year. It's going to cost you, you know, $12,000 a year. So that could be, you know, an, an ROI for one year for irrigation. You know, you got to yeah. teach them, you know, the fundamentals and, um, you know, to uh, employees, you know, uh, what's your ROI investment? You know, how can we uh, uh, save money? Um, or how, you know, so it, it, there's a lot, I guess, going back and forth on ROI, you know, but it really depends on the individual or the VP of finance or, in, you know, whoever, or the, the accountant or the, the money right. person, I guess. Yeah. Um, if you could talk to him that way, or if he cares about it, see, I'm very lucky because like I was saying before, when I came to Dennis and they already said, we want our grounds to look perfect. We want our grounds to look, you know, we want them to sell because yeah, all part of a selling. In fact, uh, the president uh, did one more and, and he's got like the donors coming to me that want to talk about grounds. He, he just cuts out the middleman completely. Yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, we have a, 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 a great person, a great donor here uh, on a campus that donates millions into our uh, an endowment to keep us around. Oh, I'll make uh, a note so, of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I said, you know, like it, it's just not admissions, but it's for donors too. So, you know, yeah. we're, we're very blessed, you know, to, to have that. And, and obviously you've used it well. And I'm sure that uh, even within your budget, things are starting to kind of stabilize from that initial investment. Let's, let's uh, wrap this thing up a little bit by talking about your most recent little project. You wrote a book. You wrote a book. So yeah, I'm very, thanks. I'm very thanks. jealous. I, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I guess what I wrote, uh, what did I write? I wrote an introduction or I wrote something for you. Thanks. Yeah. Well, actually, most of the carbon, you know, I've learned from you um, uh, the, from the carbon size of it. But um, it, it starts off where it breaks down where I, I try to talk about, you know, being good stewardships and, and, and really trying to you know, have this, um, industry, you know, to, 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 to go more of a, of a, of a, of a environmental friendly stewardship type of, right. of, of attitude. Um, and I'm not saying that they're, they're not, it just, it's just ways that I've done that I, if I can, you know, teach them or show them maybe different things or vice versa for us to get together and work. So yeah, I wrote a book and I had this, I'm working on this animated presentation that's going to go along with the book. So it's not, you know, death by PowerPoint per se. Right. And um, to talk about uh, four things, one, stormwater management. Um, and with each, with each uh, category will come the benefits of, of going green and, and, and the benefits of preserving our, our earth. And then two, the ROI that goes, you know, with, with it. So sometimes going green saves you green. That's kind of my saying. So we have stormwater management. Then we have biodiversity. All right. Oh, wow. And then the biodiversity goes from your native wildlife and to the pollinators. And, you know, the honeybees, you know, the honeybees are the best pollinators in the world. Okay. They, they, they take the trophy for it, but there's other pollinators a lot of people don't know about, like, like certain beetles and hummingbirds yeah. and so forth, you know. So there's other pollinators that kind of gets into it and, and what plants you can plant to, you know, to attract them and so forth. And then um, lastly, it gets into the uh, carbon fertility. Uh, of, of, and biological change, soil management. Biological soil management from how compost breaks down, um, compost in your own, making compost tea. In fact, I remember when your team was here, we had this little yeah. recipe book where the guys just, what I yes, call it, baseline, a baseline compost tea. And really, if you went like high on phosphorus, you know, they have like different, they, like the team knows different foods now from tests yeah. that we've been doing, you know, to, to get the phosphorus and so forth into the water or, or into the tea brew, I'm sorry, or nitrogen or potassium. They're always low percentages, but you know, um, but is it, it, it works so well with your products. It just, it puts like, it's like when, when we put your products on it, it's like steroids for, for compost. Food for eating. microbes. So you're, you're feeding the bugs and you're keeping everything going. Yeah. Who, and then we'd learn about, you know, breaking down compost and then putting the mycorrhizin into the compost. Okay. You're, you're three, three, three. And, you know, and, and, and I'm going to tell you, no matter what soils you have, Joel, that's, it, it works. 
it works. Mycorrhizae is huge. I mean, they're they're the guys that produce glomalin in the soil, and you know that keeps the soil going. Who's the book written for? I mean, what's the audience that you uh, were going after when so you? So the the book is really written for um, anywhere from um, municipality to uh, universities to liberal arts arenas. It's really to teach, you know, and to educate um, how you can do it. And kind of my 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 trademark here is tell your own story you know because right. you can tell your own story um um uh, when we're talking about saint mary's college i don't know if you've ever seen this picture but there was this huge retention stormwater um pond that all the drainage went into yep. before it went into the uh, saint mary's river which dumped into the chesapeake bay and we you know they had water lilies to, so you know algae blooms wouldn't happen from the sun we had cattails for filtering plants uh, we had a buffer zone um uh, uh that you know slowed the water down but then right next to it we had this uh this uh, i don't know if a lot of people know this but it's this vaymont you remember vaymont bermuda it was, uh, yeah, we had yeah. this, yes so we had this vaymont it was and we used the storm water to irrigate the vay you know the vaymont bermuda so it just it was like a filter and right. um Perfect. That's kind of like, you know, telling your own story. I remember the president was, uh, of that college, Dr. O'Brien, was so impressed. You know, we put signage up to explain right. what this green space was doing and so forth. So Perfect. I think that's kind of where it all started. But, yeah, it's kind of like tell your own story. How are we going to get the book? How, who's publishing? What? How, tell me about it. I don't. I don't even know that much about it. And, so right now it's unofficial. Um, we're, we're, I want to see if the college, you know, Dennis University, trying to go through them for their publishing and then an animated, you know, like we're going to develop an animated video where, um, you know, we put on Zoom, it'd be animated, we'd be, have someone to answer their questions and so forth, if they have questions and so forth. Right. And then like, you know, we we'll distribute the books that way. Can we put it on our website here at Earthworks? Oh, when it's done, I love you too, Joel. Uh, that's, thank you. Kevin, I, I can't thank you enough for uh, all the years of friendship. Uh, like I said, you've taught us an awful uh, lot. We've likewise. watched you uh, run around the countryside and doing things that nobody thought anybody could do. And uh, the proof is in the pudding, <laughs> no pun intended. Uh, but uh, I thank you for all your support for all these years, for spending some time with us here on the oh, Earthworks my podcast. Pleasure. And, uh, and we're looking forward to your book. And um, hopefully when it does come out, we'll, uh, we'll pop it up on our website and, and share it around as well. Oh, thanks, Joel. It's been, it's always fun. It's been great knowing you and your team for all these years now. And I, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for a, a better company to work with. Thanks, Kevin. Oh, thank you.